Hey guys, I'm welcome to a new video in this computer vision tutorial. So this video here will be about a new camera that we received from Econ System. So this is a really crazy camera that I'm going to show you in this video. I'll just pull it up here so you guys can actually see like this is a really small camera, but it's actually like a 4K resolution camera with 16 megapixel uh, sensor camera. Even though it's really small, you can see like the lens here at the top. It's just in this really small breadboard here. So in this video here, we're going to talk about this camera here. We're going to use it in future videos. So this will be the main camera that I'm going to use uh, throughout all the tutorials in the future on this channel here because this camera here is just so good. It has good autofocus, really high resolution and so on. And it's, it's a really small camera compared to like uh, some of the other ones or if you're using webcam and, and so on. But I'll jump into this video here. Let's see the specs about this camera. Let's see how we can open it up with OpenCV in Visual Studio Code. Uh, with python let's see the quality let's see how it does detections with some of the other uh with some of the other videos and tutorials that we've been through on this channel but this is a really crazy camera but first of all remember john discord server i'll link to it down in the description here you come join the channel shadows are computer vision deep learning ai and so on you can always become a member of the channel for a small monthly fee everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel also, if you're a member of the channel, you can also get some help in your own projects. If you have some problems, I can help you out, give you some guidance and so on. If you're a member of the channel. Also, remember to hit the subscribe button under the video here. Only 10% of you guys watching these videos here are actually like subscribing to the channel. And it just means a lot to me and the channel here uh, on YouTube. So thank you guys. So first of all here, we're just going to jump into Econ Systems website. So this is where I, I received the camera from. So thank you guys a lot for Econ System for sending me out this camera here. It's really high quality. I've tested out a couple of times. It's just really high quality as you're going to see. Like this is a really small camera. I'm actually like, really impressed uh, by the quality of, of such a small camera here that can be used for a lot of different robotics applications. It's really small. It can fit into a lot of 3D printed uh, cases. It can, it can be used for a lot of different applications, projects and so on. It's really small so it can even be used in production um, in productions, like in products, in the real world, and so on. But here we're in Econ Systems uh, website, then we'll go into the camera products. We're going to look at some of the cameras they have. We will go specifically into this camera that I received, and then we can actually like, go in um, and see the specs of this camera here before we actually like, going to jump into Visual Studio Code and see the performance and results. So we're going to run a face detector later on so we can see how good it acts like is. So here we'll go inside the USB 3 cameras module here. So again, it's also really fast. So we get almost no latency or like shutter on our camera. So we have almost no latency because it uses USB 3. And also often when we're dealing with, with like development cameras and so on, we don't really have an interface for USB 3. Then you often like need to use some other different kind of like um, microcontrollers or something like that, like a Raspberry Pi or Jensen Nano. And you will have the CSI cables and, and stuff like that. But this camera here, it's just like USB-C in the bottom and then you just plug it into your computer with USB-3. It's up and running immediately, so there's no setup and so on. So it's really fast, it's really easy to get used, uh, to, to start using, and it's just really high quality. So down here we can see that they have different kind of cameras. They have some 4, 4K cameras, which is this camera. They also have some smaller cameras, like if you don't need that good resolution. They also have full uh, like HD cameras here. Global, global shutter cameras, autofocus cameras, and so on. They also have 3D depth cameras here. So I know a lot of you guys here on my channel um, are working with point clouds, 3D depth cameras, information, real sense uh, sensors, cameras, and so on to get point clouds and do a lot of like real life applications and projects. Uh, with that, we also have low light cameras. If you have some environment with low lighting conditions, we can also use that. We also have enclosure cameras. But here we can just see some of the examples of the cameras that they have. So we can see again, all the cameras here is basically just like um, um, a print here, like a, a circuit where there's a lens on top of it. And it's just really small and good for uh, products and also like developing products. So here we'll just, first of all, we'll go into the 4K cameras or actually we should just start with the 3D depth cameras. So again, they have these three different kind of cameras. So they have a stereo vision camera. They also have a 3D time of flight camera. So I know if some of you guys have requested some time of flight camera tutorials and so on. Uh, but they also have vision, like stereo vision setups in here where they have two cameras. And here we can see that this camera here can actually be used for NVIDIA GPU to speed up the process even uh, even more. Again, we're working with USB 3 cameras. They also have some other different kind of cameras, USB, USB 2 cameras. Uh, they also have some GMSL cameras, 3D depth cameras, industrial cameras, and so on. Actually, we can take a look at the industrial cameras here as well. So 
they have some different kind of uh, options here but again we also have some InfiniVision cameras if you just want some really low resolution cameras uh, that can run like fast just have good uh, good quality and is easy to set up so if you just go up here again to USB 3 cameras, I'll find the camera that we received from Econ Systems. So we'll go into the 4K cameras and then we actually like have this 16 megapixel autofocus USB camera. So we have the C3 cam 160. So we'll just go into inside this one here and look at some of the different kind of like uh, specs on this camera because it's just really, really good. We can see the small, the small like print here with the small lens here at the up, up, up at the top. It uses USB-C at the bottom to interface to your computer, where you just plug in your USB free, uh, three point one cable into the computer, and it's just up and running immediately. So here we can see that is sixteen megapixel color autofocus USB free one gen uh, camera, and it's based on a Sony sensor. So we actually like, have this IMX two hundred and uh, at 2, 298 CMOS image sensor. So this acts like also a really, really, really good sensor from Sony. So that is why we get so good quality um, and resolution here on our camera. This small form factor camera here has a dedicated inbuilt high performance image signal processor. So we actually like have like dedicated um, signal processing like for images on the chip. So we can be tuned to bring the best in class image quality and color uh, reproduction. So I'm going to open up a program where we can actually tune some of these different kind of parameters on our camera. So it's also very uh, variable. So we can actually tune some of these parameters. We can change it to our lighting additions if we want like the colors to appear in some different kind of like cases and so on. We can also use that. So here we can see it works both on Linux and Windows. We're going to use it on Windows in this tutorial here as in all the other tutorials here on my channel. We can see down here that this compact single board camera with features like high resolution, again, it's really high resolution, autofocus, zero shutter lag and digital zoom is ideal for such applications like industrial applications like rock tables, telepresence, uh, document scanners, OCR readers, um, and so on. So they can be used for tons of different kind of like computer vision projects um, and applications. But again, as we're going to see, we can also do digital zoom, which can be used for a lot of different kind of applications as well. So this is the main specs of this camera here. We can read more about it down here at the bottom. But again, like these are the most important specs here up at the top. We can also see they have some software that have the module features uh, listed here. So we can see that the sensor active area is, is this really high resolution here. So we have a 4K, like 4K, we have 4,656 uh, in the height and not in the width here. Uh, so this is the, basically the resolution of the, um, of the sensor. So this is the 16 megapixel, uh, megapixel sensor. We can also see the field of view here. So we can see we have a field of view of about like up to like around 80, uh, 80 degrees in our field of view of our camera. So this is actually like a really nice camera where we can get like a large field of view with really high image quality. So right now we've jumped into the Econ system software that they have made for the cameras. So this is called EcamView. So in here we can actually like change the resolution of our camera, tune some different kind of parameters for like the focus. Um, if you want to zoom in our image, we can also change the brightness, um, saturation and so on. But up here at the top, we can actually like just choose our device. So this will be our C3 Cam 160. So now we will open it up. We can see here that we get the output. So first of all, it's really bad image quality because it right now we can go up to the options, video capture pin. So right now it just runs like this uh, U triple Y um, comparison or like compression color space uh, format. And then the output size here is just 640 by 480. So this is the default one here, but we can change the compression up here to MJPEG. And then we can actually change our uh, resolution here to different kind of resolution. So we have the default one here with 4K resolution. We can even have higher resolution up here as well. So we saw like the maximum resolution that, that we could get inside the specs that I showed you on um, on their website. We can also just get standard HD. We can also get full HD and so on. So we can try out some of these different kind of things. But first of all here, I'll just show you the highest resolution here. Uh, so we can actually see how good it is. But when we have the highest resolution, we can only run with a frame rate of eight. So now we have applied the resolution here. I'll just make it full screen and then we can see the camera here at the bottom. I'll just take it up here. So now we can see me on the screen. We can see that this is really nice and high quality uh, that we get out from our camera. We can see that it lags a bit because we only have eight frames per second. So this is uh, really good quality. If we just need like single images with really high pixel 
uh, density, then this is a really good camera. But again, we get this lag here, so it shouldn't be used for uh, real-time applications. And often in real-time applications, we don't need uh, this uh, large of uh, resolution. We can also try out some of the other different kind of resolutions here. So we can maybe go for uh, 4K here, but then we have 24 frames per second. Uh, if we apply that, so we get way more frames per second, but we still have a 4K camera. Uh, we can see still really good quality on our on our screen here. Uh, it doesn't lag as much. It doesn't. It lags sometimes because we only have like 24 frames uh, per second, but we still have really high quality in our images. The last one here I'm going to show is just like a, a really good resolution. It's just full HD. So often you should just go with that one because we don't really need that high resolution again. And now we will get 30 frames per second, which is more like uh, real time. So here we can see still really, really high quality. It has, it actually have really nice autofocus as well. And now we can see that it is in real time here with 30 frames per second as my video, uh, as my camera here, or my other camera for uh, the streaming is running on. So here we can see like the autofocus is actually like really good. If we change it closer here to the head, it just really fast changes to the head uh, with the autofocus. So it's really good camera really high quality and now we're going to see how we can open it up with python and opencv and then we're going to use this camera here in all feature future videos here on this channel uh so again really nice camera so i just want to show you like one last thing here before we're going to jump into the code and see how we can actually like set it up in opencv we can also go up to the options and video capture filters and then we can play around with some of these filters here that we have so we can try to play around with the brightness so we can make a darker scene, we can do a lighter scene. Uh, we can also play around with the contrast if we want to change the contrast, saturation, the sharpness. So if you want a more blurry image or like a more sharper image, if you want to do some different kind of like image processing techniques and so on. We can also play around with the backlight compensation and so on. But we can also set these things to auto. We're just going to go with the default one right now. It's, it's pretty good and it's just really good out of the, out of the pack. We can also have some camera control here where we can zoom with the camera. Again, we have still really nice pixel uh, intensity. We can play around with the focus. Right now it's just set on autofocus. We can also like tilt the camera so we can flip it 180 degrees um, and so on here inside of our program. We can just set the parameters here as well. So we have a lot of different kind of options with this camera. It's just really nice with this small camera and really high quality. So. Let's now jump into the code and see how we can set it up with OpenCV and, and, and try to use it as a face detector and see how good it acts like is. So we're not jumping into the Visual Studio code. We're just going to run this face detector here from MediaPipe. So I've made another video about it here on the channel. So definitely you'll just go check those out. We won't go into the code here, but basically we're just setting up a face detector. Then we load in an image from our video capture, which is just a webcam or the webcam that I just showed you. And again, this will be the camera that we're going to use in all feature uh, videos. Then we just pass in that image through our model. We get the results out and then we're basically just drawing the boundary boxes, the confidence score, and also uh, the class or like the, the face that we're detecting. So we'll create a boundary box around the face and then we'll also display the confidence score. So this video here, we're just going to run the program and see the results here with our new camera that we're going to use. So here I'm running the program. It will then activate the content base. It will run the program with CPU. We can even see here that we get around 300 frames per second. So this is actually like, again, it's a really nice base detector. Definitely check out MediaPipe and the videos I have about MediaPipe. Um, in, if you're interested in that, it's just really fast. And again, we get really nice results with this camera here. It doesn't lose track. We're around like 90% all the time, 90 up to 96, seven, eight percent uh, confident that this is act like a face that we're detecting in the scene. So here we just keep track of the face all the time, even though I'm turning my head to the sides and also the other side, maybe we can lose track if I turn a bit more behind. So again, this is actually like a really nice detector, really high image quality as we're going to see in the future videos as well. So this is a really huge upgrade and I'm really thankful for Ecosystem for sending out this camera here that we're going to use. So again, even though I'm moving the camera, it changes the light set, light settings, also the autofocus, we're still detecting with a really high confidence score, um, the face here in the image. Oh, we can also see my dog here at the background, it's just laying there, it doesn't detect that as a face. I don't know why. But yeah, this is definitely a great camera, definitely check it out if you want to, and 
then we're just going to use it in future videos here on the channel. So thank you guys for watching this video here. And again, remember to hit the subscribe button under the, under the video here and also hit the bell notification so you get a notification when I upload a new video here in uh, the computer vision tutorials, deep learning tutorials, or if you're just creating some projects. So I'm calling us doing this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about like basic image operations, camera calibration, stereo vision, um, how we can use stereo vision to get depth information in our images and combine that with point clouds, do different kind of point clouds operations and so on. But if you're interested in computer vision and, and the computer vision tutorial I have, I'll link to it up here or else in the scene next video guys. Bye for now.